Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z Flashback, a series of explorations of the 150 games that make up Atari Flashback Classics for Nintendo Switch. Today's game is Super Breakout. This was a 1982 release from Atari, and it was distributed as a pack-in release for the four joystick port model of the Atari 5200, which means it's a very common game for the platform. If you uh, are collecting for the Atari 5200, this is probably one of the first ones you'll get along with Pac-Man. It was regarded as something of a showcase for the Atari 5200's analog stick, because the Atari 5200 didn't use paddles like the Atari 2600 did, but the non-centering analog stick of the Atari 5200 controller was actually quite a good means of controlling games like Super Breakout. It was criticised on its original release for not offering anything particularly technically impressive over and above what the Atari 2600 was capable of, though its alphanumeric characters were praised as being superior to the Atari 2600. Nothing like being damned with faint praise, is that? Anyway, let's go play the Atari 5200 version of Super Breakout. Okay, welcome back once again to Atari Flashback Classics, where today we're taking a look at Super Breakout for the Atari 5200. Um, now, we looked at Super Breakout for the Atari 2600 last time, um, and a lot of people sort of criticised this version for not really bringing enough more to the table over and above what the 2600 version offered but uh, you know it, it's it's got its appeals so it's it's worth a look separately let's take a look at the manual does it have the same story as the 2600 version that is the question super assignment you're the pilot of a super powered space shuttle and you're blazing a path through distant superclusters at incredible space age speed the uncharted planet Iaris is your destination. You know from preliminary briefing that Iaris is surrounded by a mysterious colourful force field. Astronomers have photographed the iridescent force field with high-powered telescopic cameras. There is much conjecture on Earth as to what the wall of colours around Iaris might be, but no one is certain. Your mission is to break up the force field. Your spaceship is equipped with special hardware to help you complete this important assignment. As you smash out the bright coloured matter, sensors will analyse it, grade it and relay the results back to scientists on Earth. You too will see the scores. Your computer signals that Iaris is dead ahead. A brilliant band of colours flashes into view. Wow, this is more startling and impressive than any of the photos you saw back on Earth. Your hands eagerly grip the controls as you prepare to blast through. Ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Anyway, Super Breakout contains the following game variation, Breakout Double Cavity Progressive. So these are all the same as in the arcade version and in the 2600 version. The object in all these games is to keep the ball in play while scoring the highest possible number of points or to score more points than your opponent. Points are scored by hitting the ball into the rows of bricks. The bricks crumble and disappear one at a time when hit. The point value is determined by brick colour. In double or cavity, it is possible to score double or triple your normal point value when two or three balls are in play simultaneously. Players get five serves or turns in all games. Yep. Uh, okay. Press the hash key to select the game of your choice. It will cycle through the game names in order. If you wish to extend your current game, you may do so by acquiring five new balls. To receive five extra serves, press the number one key or on your overlay the square mark to extra games before the fifth ball is served. In a multiple player game, this must be done before player one serves the fifth ball. Each player will then receive five new serves. When this feature is activated, a solid square appears on the screen below the ball or serve number. To show that you've been cheating! You can only use that once per game. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so this supported the trackball as well, which I don't believe was available at the time the game was released, but it, it, it did come out later. Uh, after serving the ball, to make contact and keep the ball in play, push your joystick or trackball left or right. Okay, well, we know how to play breakouts. Okay, anyway, let us play. Oh, interestingly, the extra games button is not implemented in this version, so you can't cheat. There we are. All right, so you can cycle through the game modes by pressing the game select button. And you can choose the number of players with the um, choose number of players button. And then hit start. And off we go. So, as you can see, we've got absolute analog controls again. 
So this is simulating what it would be like to play with the non-centering analog joystick on the Atari 5200. With the, with the main difference being that the joystick on the 5200 is much larger than the thumbstick. And so I, I don't know if that would have made it easier or not, but... But anyway, my usual strategy stands, which is if you're playing this with a thumbstick, move around the perimeter of the indentation that the thumbstick is in rather than just trying to move left and right, and you'll find yourself being able to be much more accurate. Oops. He says, missing the ball completely. So yeah, I mean, you can see why people said that this was fairly underwhelming in terms of graphics and sound. In fact, I'd, I'd say that the sound effects in this are actually worse than the 2600 version. Because the 2600 version at least had that nice sort of randomised element to it, where each time you played, oops, you had a slightly different tone to the sound effects. Um, I'm not standing for that terrible score. Um... Yeah, you had a slightly different tone to the sound effects each time you played, which which added a nice bit of variation. Whereas in this one, you just got this little sort of farty noise when you hit the ball. And a pathetic little boop when a brick gets knocked out. I mean, it's entirely possible that this version of the game is affected by the slightly dodgy pokey emulation on the 5200 emulator in this package but even so even if even if even if that is to blame those sound effects are pretty underwhelming <laughs> to say the least but you know it moves really smoothly you look at how Slickly and smoothly that ball is moving across the screen. It's at a good pace as well. It's not too fast to be manageable. Oops. Apparently it is for me. <laughs> and it sort of accelerates gradually. And I believe there's actually a slightly wider range of angles you can hit the ball at in this one than there is in the 2600 version. Which means you can play a slightly more accurate and interesting game than in that version. I, I still prefer the 2600 version for various reasons, but I mean, this, this isn't a bad version, but I can also see why people regard it as uh, not a particularly good pack-in for, um, for the 5200. It doesn't actually showcase the 5200 at its best. All right, here's progressive mode, which is my favourite way to play Super Breakout. So in progressive mode, what you do is you have these two layers of wall up at the top. And every so often, they will advance down the screen. And basically what you need to do is try and survive for as long as you can, knocking through as many layers of that wall as you can before they advance too far or before you run out of, uh, run out of serves. Now, I really like this mode because it, it has a nice pace to it. It has a nice sense of gradually getting more difficult as you play. And, um, yeah, for, for me, it's it's very much the thing that makes Super Breakout special as opposed to Standard Breakout. Because I, I think it's the mode that's most obviously different. Oops. <laughs> It's the mode that I think is most obviously different from the original Breakout. Both both Cavity and Double feel very much like the original Breakout. And I mean, th this does too, but just, just that simple addition of the wall moving every so often distinguishes it and makes it feel like something new and different.
and yeah although i do prefer the 2600 version of this to this 5200 version i prefer this 5200 version to the arcade version still i do not like the arcade version of super breaker at all it is much too difficult You know, I, I like a challenge as much as the next man. I mean, we've spent God knows how many weeks playing these Atari 2600 games at this point. And uh, they are nothing if not challenging. But, you know, Super Breakout for the arcade, just it just takes things a bit too far. Just the, the combination of the speed it goes and the tiny size of the paddle... It's just it's just not very fun for me but you have to sort of respect it for what it created because without that we wouldn't have this we wouldn't have the 2600 version we wouldn't have arkanoid we wouldn't have all sorts of other games whoops itchy nose poor timing actually not a terrible score here compared to some of the other performances I've exhibited today. I suspect it's probably still going to say oops at me when I finish, so... Oh no, game over. Yep, yeah, there we are. Oops. Alright, let's try double. So in double mode, you have two panels. And you have two balls. And if you successfully manage to keep both balls on the screen then you get double points while they are still on the screen it's uh, harder than it looks I don't know. I just find it really hard to focus on any kind of multiple ball, bat and ball thing for some reason. I just don't really know where to look. <laughs> so I think double is to a certain extent slightly wasted on me, but well, you know, you can enjoy having two paddles on the screen at least. And that in theory makes it slightly easy to return the ball but no oh god missed them both go on get up the top no uh, oh we'll try it that but yeah regarding the comment i made about alphanumerics at the start um, the reason why that is a, a thing on the uh, Atari 5200 is that um, the Atari 5200 was pretty much based on the hardware of the Atari 400 home, com home computer and as such it had all of the built-in graphics modes and character sets and that sort of thing that the Atari 400 had um, and thus in contrast to the 2600 which had very little stuff built into its operating system the 5200 had things like a font built in so that that text you can see at the bottom with the number and saying player one up and the the title of the game and so on that is all a built-in character set so to make the 5200 display some text on screen was a very simple process uh, whereas on the 2600 it was a little bit more complicated which explains why in so many early 2600 games you have very 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 simple score displays with those giant pixelated numbers and that sort of thing um and it wasn't until relatively later games from developers like activision and so on that you started seeing a sort of more consistent use of alphanumeric characters for things like score and lives displays and status readouts and that sort of thing Simply because, among other things, the 2600 didn't have the memory to store a lot of that stuff. Whereas the 5200 had a lot of it in ROM, so... Um, 
Ugh. Fair. Ooh. Ooh, I got something out of an oops. That's for getting over 200 points, I guess. All right, and finally, cavity mode. Where we have two paddles. We have one ball. And we have two balls just waiting to be released from their cavities. No, no, no. Yeah, as as bad as I am at Breakout, there's still something enjoyably hypnotic about it. It's the sort of game that you can just sort of zone out to completely, even if you're even if you're terrible at it. There's something just inherently pleasing about just just watching that ball bounce back and forth. And the bricks crumbling away. And the little boopity boop noise as you score points. Excuse me. So we now release the second ball. So, oh no, and the third ball. And we've lost one of them. But again, while there's multiple balls in play, so not necessarily on the screen, uh, while there's multiple balls in play, you get a multiplier on your score. All right, that is pretty much everything there is to show about Super Breakout there. So uh, I guess we'll leave that there for today. That is Super Breakout for the Atari 5200. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.